We're not so much interested in fully constructed stories designed to communicate a point. We're interested in gathering large amounts of fragmented narrative, the sort of water cooler conversations, conversations around the campfire if you want, areas where people naturally swap or exchange knowledge and they do so in the form of fragmented narrative, sometimes known as anecdotes. They very rarely use fully constructed stories and I tell stories but they're teaching stories and those themselves have evolved over time. In day-to-day -day conversation, you would never do that. You'd be cut short. So our approach has always been to try and capture that narrative because stories are fractal in nature. The stories when you get together for a family reunion very much determine your re-identification as a family. In fact, actually observe the next time you come together. Within minutes, you'll start to retell some of the old stories. You're re-establishing that family identity. So stories are the fundamental patterning device through which we understand the world in their fragmented anecdotes, not composed stories. And they basically comprise a hugely valuable set of research data. So given this fragmented, unstructured, anecdotal method by which we communicate and learn and perceive the world, we developed an approach by which we capture that material in the field in its original form. We don't allow computers to interpret it because semantic web, semantic analysis is limited language is far more flexible than we can interpret in that way. We don't allow experts to interpret it because cognitive or cultural bias overlays it. The person who provides the material decides what it means. This is called self-signified um, micro-narrative or self-signified fragments. So for example, in a traditional questionnaire, you might ask people, uh, do your leaders consult with you on a regular basis? Well, the answer to that is sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. Sometimes they should, sometimes they shouldn't. I've been asked for a generic average experience over a year or more. Our approach instead is to get people to tell very specific anecdotes about leadership, each of which is a discrete item, and then to signify what those means. Now, one method, for example, is to place where their story sits within a triangle. There's one illustrated here. It shows the three labels of altruistic behavior, analytical behavior, assertive behavior, and a leader needs to display all of those in various combinations, so I place my story on that triad. The interesting thing here is that from cognitive science, we knew that three things would force people to think about their answer more, whereas a simple linear scale, people just slot it quite quickly. In practice, we've seen the same things. People move that dot in the middle around a bit until they're comfortable. They're consciously thinking about it. If they collectively index it, they talk about it, so we get valuable data. And of course, for every place they place on a triangle, we get three items of quantitative data. Now, what that allows us to do is to take, and let's go back to the principles of complexity science. I've now got distributed cognition. People index their own stories or signify their own stories. Because in practice, they're adding layers of meaning, not just interpreting the content. Secondly, I've got finely grained material. I've got fragmented anecdotes or micro-narratives. I haven't got very structured material. And thirdly, that allows me in disintermediation to use complex representations. For example, a fitness landscape where I can store thousands and thousands of stories and where the hollows in the landscape represent belief systems, whereas the peaks represent opportunities for people to change the way they think. This is a radical new approach to research. It substitutes extremely well for traditional questionnaires in employee satisfaction surveys in understanding customer attitudes because it allows the continuous free capture of narrative with instant feedback. capture not so long ago where we pulled in something like 3,000 stories from Pakistan within a week. Self-signified at the point of origin including about a thousand from the refugee camps 
and the material then could be interpreted almost straight away. Whereas in traditional research, the capture period, the interpretation period, the presentation period would have introduced several months lag before the data was available to decision makers, which of course is the third principle of complexity, disintermediation, the ability for a leader to go directly to the micro-narrative, having sensed or seen a pattern or an anomaly in the met metadata. Mm -hmm.